Today, I'm going to be giving you my picks for the best AM4 Ryzen motherboards at around the $100 to $200 price points, so stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. Before I get started, if you like what you see here, consider helping the channel by donating on Patreon. I'm not anywhere near a place where I can do this full time, but if I get to that point, I can certainly raise the quality and amount of content on this channel. You actually get a special Discord role if you do $5 or more a month. So I've heard the many comments of those who've been patiently waiting for my picks on the best motherboards for $200 and under. Just like in part one, please remember that this is purely based off the motherboards I would pick based on my needs at these price points. I'll also explain a little bit of the thought process that went into each decision, so you can figure out if my pick is best for you or if you should go with something else. And once again, please don't be angry if I don't pick your board or brand, etc. It comes down to personal preference and the user's needs. As a final disclaimer, this is also based on the information we have now. It doesn't mean it can't change as more boards are introduced. As far as criteria, like last time, I haven't personally used the boards, but I'm taking quite a few things into account. Price to features, typical brand reliability, predicted support, and quite a few others. The main thing I'll try to keep out is my personal preference for a particular aesthetic. Also, remember that just because you have enough of a budget to purchase a higher tier board doesn't necessarily mean you need it. Make sure the features are what you personally will use. I don't suggest getting something with the hopes you'll use it one day, like dual GPUs, because more than likely, you won't. Also, these will only be full ATX motherboards. And lastly, this is not sponsored, but I will have affiliate links to the boards in the description. So if you use those, it won't cost any more, but it helps me out. So without further ado, let's get started. First up on the list is the board I'd get for around the $200 price range, and that's the ASRock Tai Chi, if you can get it for no more than $200. I know I seem to pick ASRock every time, but their boards aren't perfect. It just so happened that it works out in the end because the features they do have tend to be more in the line of what I want. Now, if looks came into play, it would either be the MSI X370 Pro Carbon or the Gigabyte Aorus GA AX370 because looks are quite important to me, and I personally don't care for the Tai Chi's appearance. With that said, it was really hard for me not to go with MSI because it has 6 USB 3.1 instead of 2. I really love a lot of rear I.O. The issue with the MSI board that caused a slight concern was its lower quality VRMs. When I overclock, I don't want to have to worry about needing cooling on the VRMs for times of full load. Really, I have no doubt it would handle pretty fine, but it's my only slight concern. Minus a couple less SATA ports as well, but really it just goes down to that because I do a bunch of benchmarks, etc. Gigabyte was also really, really close and that it has tons of rear I.O. But the one thing that it fell short of in this price range is that it only had one M.2 slot, whereas the MSI and ASRock have two. Though, 20 gigabit speeds are on the second one instead of the same 32 for the first slot. I'd like to think I'd use both of those with some awesome fast memory. But, if you do feel MSI's VRMs are good enough, or you don't plan on doing much overclocking, it's absolutely a fantastic board, especially if you can get a great deal on it like the one Newegg has in the US. If you don't need two M.2 slots, Gigabyte's board is very good for the money. Do you kind of see how it's really user specific here? Okay, so on to the next range of $150, this actually has an upset as it goes to the Gigabyte X370 Gaming K5. It almost went to the ASRock Fatality Gaming K4 with the dual M.2 slot and for it being $10 cheaper, but if you look closely, it only supports PCI Express X2, so the second slot only gets up to 10 gigabit per second speeds, and it makes room for the second M.2 by getting rid of the PCI Express X4 slot that the Gigabyte board has. The Gaming K5 also offers 8 SATA 6 gigabit ports instead of 6, and has an unbelievable rear I.O. with 6 USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and 3 USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A ports. The Zeus X370 Pro AM4 is also an option if you can get it on sale like it is at Newegg in the US. Next up on the list is what I know many of you are looking for, the B350 territory. For this video, I'm looking at around $100 to $110 price range. With it being the B350 chipset, you're losing dual GPU as your main drawback, and some slightly less powerful VRMs and less I.O. 
Now, if you're going to get a B350 for $125 or so, if you can afford it, try to just get the X370 for around the $130 mark, like the Zeus Prime X370A, or a cheaper B350 unless you need something that that board offers, like higher VRMs. Either way, my pick for the B350 board in this price range is actually a tie. I know, I know, kind of a cop-out, but either way, it... it it was really, really hard. I would personally boil it down when I was purchasing something to the aesthetics in this case, pretty much 100%. So that's why it's a tie. Either way, it's a tie between the Gigabyte GA B350 Gaming and the ASRock Fatality B350 Gaming K4. The Gigabyte has a whopping four USB 3.1s, but the ASRock has a Type-C port, yet with no USB 3.1 ports. And one thing to note around this price point is that you'll see motherboard manufacturers touting two M.2 slots, but that's just marketing. Sure, the second slot is M.2, but it only supports SATA 6 gigabit speeds, so honestly it's kind of pointless in my opinion. Now, for the overclocking lovers who want to get the absolute best overclocking experience, you may want to go for the MSI B350 Tomahawk, as it seems, at least from Kit Guru, that it has the best overclocking performance out of the three. But we are talking very small margins here, so it wouldn't be that big of a difference but of course that is something to look at okay so that ends today's video but let me know what your favorite board is in the comments below and i know there are boards a good bit cheaper but i think most watch my channel are more of the enthusiasts and wouldn't want a board you can't overclock with and things like that now if you don't want to see a part three let me know in the comments below also as a final disclosure please remember this is personal preference and things i look for in a board Really, towards the end of my research, my brain began melting from all the comparisons and charts, so there is a chance I missed something. And also, I didn't really go any below, like, $95 when I was doing it, so just keep those things in mind when deciding for yourself. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggest a video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.